الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العظيم الكريم منزل القرآن على نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وحافظه إلى يوم الدين The respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to your program a program that intends to bring the lives of those great people into our lives the nobles the intention from the beginning was very clear the aim to me as the host of the program is very clear that we could really benefit from the lives of those people whose lives have been preserved by Allah for us to look at to ponder to learn from I hope that we could learn from the lessons that they went through, from the experiences they had. And these experiences should be reflected on what we do. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters, I should say sons and daughters, this episode of your program, The Nobles, is going to be about a very unique personality, a child, a young man, a man who devoted his life for the Quran. al dhahabi described him as the master of the readers of the Quran. Excelled in this matter to the extent that whenever you see Quranic circles all over the Muslim world, even the non-Muslim world. You see Muslim children gathering together of all colors, all languages, all nationalities, reciting the words of Allah. This man has to be remembered. When you look at the millions of copies of Quran all over the world, and you open it at your ease time, and you read you remember this man. You remember this man whenever the Quran is recited and whenever the Quran is interpreted. He is no other than Zayd ibn Thabit, ibn al-Dahak, al-Najjari, al-Khazraji, al-Ansari. May Allah be pleased with him. His story starts with the start of the Hijrah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As a matter of fact, all the Arabs had no history before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They were very insignificant. But with their own attachment to Islam, with the, their own attachment to the final revelation, to the eternal teachings, they have become a nation, a real nation that has its own influence on the world. And that influence will continue until the end of this world as long as they're attached to these teachings. Our noble character was 11 when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina. His father died in a battle called Bu'ath that was between, took place between Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj, the two tribes of Medina. This is how they were before Prophet Muhammad ﷺ came to them and turned them into brothers. Real brotherhood that was established the first time in history when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina. Everybody wanted to really participate. Everybody was looking for a role to play. Not in the life of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ only, but in the life of this deen. They realized from the beginning that they are laying down the foundation of Islam. And the foundations of Islam are not built with stones, concrete. They are built with men and women who have freely devoted their lives for the sake of Allah. It was the second year of Hijrah when the Battle of Badr took place. And our hero, our noble personality, was 13. He took his sword that was taller than him, marching 
to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, I would like to join you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at him with a fatherly tenderness and kindness. And he said, Zayd, you're too young for that. I cannot let you go. He didn't say to him, I will not give you a toy. It's not a joke going to the battlefield. He went back to his mother and Nawar bin Tumalik. May Allah be pleased with her. Those are the women who raised those kind of people. He was crying and he was hitting the ground with his sword. He said, the Prophet وسلم, rejected me. She said, the Prophet وسلم, is wiser than us. He knows what is best for you. The second year, the Quraysh's came to Medina, invaded Medina, and the Battle of Uhud took place. Again, he went to the Prophet وسلم, and he was returned. He was very sad. But his mother realized that her son is having an attribute, a quality that might make his name permanent in history. He had an ability, a skill, through which he may provide a lot to Islam. One day she heard him reciting Quran in his room not playing with the PlayStation and watching ugly videos. No, he was reciting Quran. He was seeking refuge with the Quran. Consolation, his father passed away. He is an orphan. But being an orphan did not deprive him from being disciplined in a way that pleases Allah and his Prophet Muhammad She listened to his sweet voice while reciting Quran, surah after surah. She was astonished. She said, Zayd, how many surahs do you memorize? Said mother, 17. She called some of her relatives and they listened to Zayd. And they suggested to her to take Zayd to the Prophet wasallam. When Zayd went to the Prophet wasallam, and the Prophet said to him, Recite Quran for me, Zayd. The Prophet ﷺ was astonished, was puzzled, but he was happy to hear this child, young man, reciting the Quran in the sweetest voice to be heard. Memorizing 17 surahs in a very short period of time. He said, Zayd, you have an excellent recitation of the Quran. He said, but Prophet of Allah, I know how to write well as well. Subhanallah. At a time when there was about 48 scribes of the Quran, no other nation pres preserved its own sacred book as Allah appointed among this ummah. Only from among the supporters of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, 48 scribes. Their job to write down each ayah of the Qur'an momentarily as it is revealed fresh to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Though they received Qur'an with their memories first and they applied Qur'an in their lives. As it's mentioned when you pass by the streets of Medina, late at night you don't hear music, you don't hear people shouting, soap opera taking place, you hear the recitation of the Qur'an. This is why it was a unique generation. And Zayd appeared in that generation. The Prophet ﷺ asked him to write. His writing was excellent. He said, Zayd, you will be one of the writers of Revelation. What a job for that young man that he felt, now I have a role to play in the life of Muhammad ﷺ, in the life of the Ummah, in the life of the whole world, my name will stay there, firm, to be remembered by every person who recites Quran. 
This was his start with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as writing revelation for him. Zaid found himself a new job, an honorable job to be one of the scribes of Prophet Muhammad At a very young age, not only a scribe, but as the Dhabi said, the master of all scribes, Zaid was very well known for his intelligence, his very strong memory that he reported himself that he revised Quran in its own entirety with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He became so much knowledgeable about the Quran that he would know when every and each ayah was revealed and the occasion about which that ayah took place. One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every day actually when revelation would come to him, he would say, what is Zayd? Ask for Zayd to bring his ink, though he would write the words of God. This is a witness to the ayah that Allah mentioned in the Quran. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. We have indeed revealed remembrance, Quran, and will keep it intact. This is a promise that Allah made in the Quran. And this is why the Qur'an will be kept intact until the Day of Judgment, regardless of the weakness of Muslims nowadays. Because the beginning started with the memories of those people who recited Qur'an by heart. And now it is dictated from one generation to another, preserved orally and in writing. At the time when al-Dhahabi wrote his book, the biographies of the nobles. He said, nowadays, there are more than two million books of the Quran available. How many are there available today? Millions and millions. It goes, the reward goes to those people who started with their ink, writing the Quran down, ayah by ayah, until it was completed in its own current form where they revised it with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The role of Zayd did not end by the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, it continued after that. After the battle of Al-Yamama, which took place in the middle of Najd, many of the Qurra, the scribes, the reciters of the Quran, started to die. And Abu Bakr and Umar were afraid that the Qur'an will disappear with them. And most of those so-called Al-Qurra, there were many of them among the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They have really memorized Qur'an by heart. And this book is not for one generation or two generations. It's for all generations. It is an eternal book of guidance. There is a need to preserve that book. It is the role of Ummah to preserve that book. This is why Abu Bakr listened to the advice of Umar, may Allah be pleased with them all, that we need to bring those reciters of the Qur'an. We need to collect all the written documents of the Qur'an. They should be put together, saved, in case many of them would die. Umar and Abu Bakr thought for a while, who would be doing that job? Who could carry that responsibility? They chose the man 
that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already chosen. The man who revised the Quran in full with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The man who is most qualified, not because he's a relative of Abu Bakr or Umar. No. We don't give concessions to these things. Not the son of so and so. No. It is the most qualified. The 21 or 22 probably at that time, year old, young man was taking that responsibility. It's not Umar, it's not Abu Bakr, it's not Talha, it's not Zubair. Everybody has his own role. But this man was created for the Quran. His job is the Quran. He is the most knowledgeable about the Quran. Zayd was called to the presence of Abu Bakr, Siddiq. May Allah be pleased with him. And he said, Zayd, we have nominated you for a very important job. He said, what kind of job is it? He said, we need you to collect the Quran. All the written documents of the Quran should be written, revised, tested against the oral memorization, the people who have memorized the Quran, the many companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he memorized the Quran, and make sure that we have one authentic copy that all of us would refer to in case many of those researchers of the Quran would die. Zayd said, I couldn't say no, but by Allah, I felt that moving mountains from one place to another would be easier for me than doing such a job. Yes, they re realized the responsibility. They realized the responsibility before thinking of the honor because this is a service to the Ummah. A service to the Quran. And as the Prophet وسلم, said, Khayrukum man ta'allama al Quran wa allama. The best among you are those who learn Quran, then teach it. It's not enough to memorize Quran. Because the companions of Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, they were just like their leader. Walking Qurans. Walking Qurans. They're saying based on the Quran. Their work is based on the Qur'an. Their actions were related to the Qur'an. Zayd took the responsibility, assumed one of the greatest responsibilities and the most dangerous responsibilities ever to be taken by any of the companions of Prophet Muhammad He started his work, consulted with the many Sahabas who memorized the Qur'an by heart until he compiled the first Mus'haf, the first Qur'an in writing, the Qur'an was available in the hearts of the hundreds of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu But this is the first preserved copy in writing, where all the copies, all the printing presses all over the world producing are based on that single copy that this young man compiled. I speak to you, young Muslim men and women. What have you done for the Qur'an? What have you done for Islam? What have you done to elevate yourselves? Are you satisfied with the life of ease, life of carelessness, life of selfishness that we're living? No, you have a great role to play. First, we focus on ourselves. Then we find a place for us that will keep us close to Allah and through which we could provide to this deen. Zaid is an example for you and me and every Muslim young man being an orphan, his mother being a widow from a poor family did not prevent him to be among the great Muslim scholars, the people who contributed greatly to this deen. His job did not end. He was appointed to be the Mufti of Medina. During the time of Umar, he would give fatwa. At a very young age, he was, people would come and consult with Zayd and would listen to what Zayd would tell them in the presence of the great companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he was famous for knowledge. 
He was famous for the knowledge that he received directly from the mouth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was during the time of Uthman when the Muslim land spread to the east, to the north, to the south, to the west. And Muslims from multinational backgrounds, multilinguistic backgrounds, started to embrace Islam. They loved Islam. But the problem is, the companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, are their number is 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 been reduced. They're getting fewer in number because most of them are getting older. There is a great need that people will be in touch with the Quran. A new mission is awaiting this great man because his name is synonymous with the Quran. Whenever you mention the Quran, you remember Zayd. And the companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, know this very well. And they know the place that he had in the heart of Prophet Muhammad وسلم. The role used to play during the life of Prophet Muhammad وسلم. So now it is the time to make a multitude of copies. As many copies as possible. And this is as a job which is as dangerous as the previous one. As crucial to the Ummah as the previous one that they did. Uthman was not hesitant for a second to appoint Zayd because the Prophet appointed him for that job. Abu Bakr and Umar appointed him for a similar job. Now it's the time where this book will be permanently saved with the multi copies that will be made out of it. Muslims at different lands need to have their own copy of the Quran. Zaid was called for the job. He was more mature. He realized that this is a responsibility. He couldn't say no. The Quran was kept with the wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hafsa. May Allah be pleased with her because she memorized Quran by heart. And she was among the scribes of the Quran as well. The Quran, the Quran that was compiled during the time of, of Abu Bakr now is taken. And the supervisor of writing many copies of the Quran was Zayd ibn Thabit. Many copies were written. And this Quran is kept eternal. Most of the sacred books written over history were lost because they were not written. Allah preserved the Qur'an in the hearts of people and with the ink of scholars. This makes the end of this episode about the great man that Abu Huraira said when he died, we have lost great knowledge. An orphan, that being an orphan did not prevent him to contribute abundantly for the sake of Allah. Zayd ibn Thabit, al-Ansari, al-Khazraji, the noble companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Dear viewers, my audience if you like, I thank you for watching this program and I promise inshallah we'll meet in another episode with another noble personality. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.